Mr. Chairman and Professor Daniel, Director of the University, distinguished scholars and friends. Um, I'm the last speaker of the last session, so I will try to be finish, uh, you know, well in uh, well before time. I I hope. Uh, not uh, I'll not bore you anymore. Uh, out of this out of the box conference, I really appreciate the idea, the very idea of this conference. Uh, uh, in Buddhism, there is always a kind of a tendency and advice to come out of the conditioned mind that wherever we are, whatever we are doing, wherever you know, in whatever manner we are, we are always conditioned in a in a particular situation. So Buddhism advises to come out of that situation and then think and then look back to yourself and how you are and where you are and where you should be. Right. So I found this very much uh, similar to, uh, you know, Buddhist approach. So um, now coming to my topic, uh, the modern civilization proclaims that the modern society is highly advanced in its achievements in finding new social systems, economic systems, scientific inventions and discoveries and te technological uh, innovations. Yes, there have been undeniably been a remarkable strides taken in the material world with the objective of making our lives happier and easier. So we can see lots of you know advancements in uh, information, in transportation, in med medicine, and things like that, which has been immensely helpful to society. But, uh, however, still our world is ravaged with the inequality, injustice, oppression, war, violence, and consumerism. The rate of suicide in both the developed and developing countries itself is a clear indication of the fact that we have badly failed in making this world a better place to live in which uh, live, live in with the peace and the happiness. The technological innovations have been wonderful, but uh, the dark side of the story is a matter of great concern. Human beings have made extremely powerful atomic and nuclear bombs and weapons that can destroy this planet ten times. Uh, due to our hatred and animosity, we have made this world insecure where we'll live with the constant fear. This fact reflects by this fact is reflected by the magnitude of scale of the military expenditure that we made at the global level. So if you look into this, uh, uh, the, the, the expenditure that we make, then we will understand uh, where we are. The global military expenditure in recent years stands at over one trillion, uh, 1.6 billion trillion dollars is wrong. It's uh, 1.6 trillion dollars in a year. There has been a steep escalation in the military expenditure since uh, 2001. You can see here that uh, um, by two, 2000 and by 98, 97 and 98, 99 and 2000, that was beyond a trillion dollar. But then after that, till from starting from 2001 to 2010, there is a very steep kind of es escalation uh, in the military expenditures that is, you know, mostly led by the 9-11 uh, uh, terrorist attack. And from there on, the American started feeling very insecure and started spending lots of money on defense. So if we see the global distribution of military expenditure in 2010 itself, then we can see that United States has 43%, uh, whereas China has 7.3%, and then the Russia, France, and UK have a, a little bit over uh, 3%. And then the next 10 countries combined have 21.5% uh, uh, and the rest of the world 17.3%. So if the total amount of money uh, spent on defense is utilized for health, education, or for any other peaceful purpose in the world, it can cover every single person on this planet with the $236 each. 
So that's a huge amount of money. The United Nations of Organization was established to be committed to preserving peace and through international peace through international cooperation and collective security. Yet the UNO's entire budget is just a tiny fraction of the world's military expenditure, approximately 1.8 percent. So it is amazing that the UNO, which is a global kind of you know organization, spends only this much of uh, um, money for peace and uh, constructive things. And uh, we have been uh, listening this morning from uh, uh, a lady uh, from UNESCO and. Uh, According to her report, the, although uh, we do not know the, uh, the, the expenditure in figure, but uh, the expenditure is uh, suddenly significantly very you know, meager in uh, amount. So this, through this we can see, see that uh, how much we spend on the defense and uh, violence for violence purposes and at the same time for the constructive and peace purposes we have no uh, kind of you know, significant uh, expenditure being made at the global level. While we have defense ministry as one of the most prominent organs of the government in every country, strangely we have no ministry for peace perhaps in any country around the world. I say perhaps here because I have not uh, uh, you know, seen every country. Uh, there could be one, I hope. This itself reflects a significant fact that the world culture is dominated by violence with a deep sense of fear and insecurity. The two economic systems, uh, namely the communism and the capitalism, became the foundations of different political and social systems of modern world. Communism, although driven by good motivation to bring equality in society, not only failed to yield expected to result, but brought hatred and injustice in a state in the society. The main reason behind the failure is that the propounders of the view of communism and its leaders failed to trace and address the very source of equality. The equality cannot be brought in society by making rules and laws but it has to be brought by transforming the people through developing values and perceptions in them. Capitalism, on the other hand, is applauded for its free market and efficient production, etc. However, we have seen the multifaceted downfalls of capitalism, which has resulted in the, resulted in the global economic crisis. Consumerism is a direct result of cap capitalism, which is rooted to desire and craving. The global ecological problem, the atmosphere problems, are a result, result of consumerism rooted to unsatiable uh, desire and craving. We can sum up that the, more, that the advancement of modern society is basically materialistic in nature and the very approach behind the ex advancement is extroverted. Here I would like to emphatically state that the modern civilization has neglected the importance of the inner world, the mind, which is the ultimate source responsible for every positive and negative action that in turn is, are, that in turn are re responsible for happiness and suffering respectively. The great um, Buddhist master Shantideva has said that even those who wish to find happiness and overcome suffering, wonder with no aim nor meaning as they do not comprehend the secret of mind, the paramount significance of dharma. So here he's, you know, he's saying that everybody tries to, everybody wishes to be happy and does not want to be suffering, but uh, they cannot uh, accomplish this since they do not uh, comprehend, they do not understand the secret of mind, that they could not uh, go into the very level of the mind where they need to act. Uh, if they want to make uh, themselves happiness, then they, want, they should be making uh, effort at the level of mind and then avoid the suffering at the level of mind. So avoiding this very stage at the very beginning, so people make mistake. And again he uh, says, no, dharma means the general phenomena, yes. 
So again, he further says that uh, although wishing to be free from suffering, I find this very, you know, very strong uh, uh, message. Although wishing to be free from suffering, they run towards the suffering and uh, suffering itself. Although wishing to have happiness, like an enemy, they ignorantly destroy destroy the happiness. So we can see the terrorism, any kind of you know bad deeds in the world that uh, happens with the violence and the murder and uh, you know theft and uh, dacquiets and any kind of work uh, um, th that we see. The, the people who are engaged in those activities, they are actually looking for happiness, but they are involved in cert certain actions that will eventually invariably bring you know suffering at the end because. They do not understand the relation between the causal mental state and the, if, if, the results state. In the perspective of modern civilization, craving, hatred, desire, ignorance, etc., are the inherently associated with, their, with our lives, and their existence is never questioned. Thus, every system of modern society is built either on one of them or on many of them. However, according to Buddhism, these mental entities are identified as afflictive mental phenomena which are responsible for every negative action that in turn invariably brings suffering. So we have to come out of the box of the thinking culture that problem can be generally, genuinely solved with the materialistic and external approach. Genuine peace, happiness, and prosperity can be brought only with the materialist, materialistic and external approach. Mind and mental phenomena do not need to be taken into account bringing peace and prosperity in the society. Ignoring the fact that the mind and mental phenomena are responsible for every negative and positive action. So, so here, here on, we need to develop a new perspective that the failure of the mo failures and the problems of modern civilization is due to ignoring the in inner world, the mind and the mental phenomena. The fact that the mind and mental phenomena are responsible for every negative and positive action, which are in turn responsible for suffering and happiness respectively, uh, that the balance must be maintained between material, material world and the inner world. I do not uh, undermine the undermine and I do not reject uh, the, 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 the development of a materialistic world, but uh, we must keep balance between the material development and the inner, inner, inner world and inner, inner develop, development. So Buddha has identified the negative mental elements as the origin of suffering in his first discourse at Sarnath while demonstrating the causes, cause and effect of samsara, the cyclic existence. According to Buddhism, the afflictive mental elements are destructive in, in nature. When anger, for example, arises, the first victim is not the target of the er anger, but the person in whom the anger is arisen. So it destroys the tranquility of the mind of the person in which the anger is, you know, arisen. It disturbs his mind. It disturbs, it uh, disturbs uh, the rationality of the mind and distorts the perception of the object. While a person is angry, during that period, whatever the person perceives, he perceives in a very distorted manner. He cannot see the object in a right way. He cannot uh, see the object or the per Either it is object or it is a person or it is inanimate object, whatever they are, the angry person would not be able to see in an unbiased manner. It would be totally in a biased, according, really, you know, depending on the degree of anger that he has. If he has a very high rate of anger, then he would not be able to perceive anything unbiased manner in an unbiased manner. It would be totally in a biased way. So that you know, destroys the perception and you know, destroys the tranquility and the rationality of the mind. So therefore, the very first victim of the anger is the person himself or herself. 
But unfortunately, we, you know, there are many people who, many thinkers and many, you know, people who um, advocate that anger to some extent is justifiable. That even aristocrat has said that anger to some extent at the right time and the right, uh, you know, uh, context, the anger is justifiable and anger is required. So anger, whenever anger comes, it, it distorts every, you know. So the, the person is victimized to the extent that it destroys the person. So there are again some people that feeling and saying that anger gives energy to, you know, person. But in fact, that is not a, a proper, you know, of course that gives a force, but it is a totally a negative force. So that destroys the whole person, the mentality of the person. So therefore, anger is one example Okay, I thought I have 30 minutes, but <laughs> okay. So okay, I will, I will speed up. Uh, in the timetable, it is given 30. Okay, okay yes, please. Uh, eventually, it, its impact is seen on, the, on, the, on other persons and other atmospheres. Since the mental factors are extremely important, Buddha and the following Buddhist masters have extensively elaborated the system of mind, which include categories of negative, positive, neutral, mind, mental entities. Each of these has a long list of mental entities. Again, each of these which are within the list uh, have, are explained in great detail with the individual characteristics, the mode of origination, the environmental factors, and the causal factors under which the circumstance they come into existence. There are impacts on the mental and behavioral attitude. The various methods of confronting the negative mental uh, elements are extensively demonstrated with the different levels, the levels of evading them in the beginning, and subduing them, and then reducing them, and then finally, eliminating these negative men mentalities. There is extensive account of positive mental p phenomena like uh, love, con compassion, generosity, patience, altruism, and so forth, providing detailed instruction to cultivate them through meditation. Cultivate of, of these inner values make life very different. Positive think thinking and positive attitude make a positive impact on one's own life and the life of others. Buddhist spiritual practice is primarily to work on the elimination of negative mental elements and the development of positive mental elements. Since more than two decades, His Holiness the Dalai Lama has been having dialogue with the many leading scientists, physicists, biologists, astronomers, neurologists, and psychologists, which have been uh, remarkably pr productive. This interaction has brought a paradigm shift in new avenues in the scientific researches. Since about a decade from now, neurologists have, and psychologists have been doing intensive research on mental system presented in Buddhist psychology with the help of many experienced meditators. The results have been groundbreaking in various areas. They found that intensive meditation, for example, on compassion brings many changes in neurological systems of the brain, which is not possible under normal situation. Through the power of meditation, that neurons can be rejuvenated, which was not believed so earlier. With the help of meditation, it is found that the expression of neurons are changed are change, uh, expressions of neurons changes, which again was not believed so earlier. It is found that due to the cultivation of positive mental attitude, with the help of meditation and uh, meditation, the person concerned is seen with a much more peaceful mind. Consequently, the, his behavioral ed attitude is seen constructive. Of course, this brings positive social engagement. Ma maintaining positive mental attitude, mental state is also found to have a strong positive impact on physical health of the person. A major shift is seen in the research of mind as a result of interaction with the Buddhism that the scientists have begun to do first-hand experiment instead of a second-hand experiment, which, is a which had been prevalent uh, right from the beginning uh, till now. 
Many clinical researches are being undertaken in conjunction with the Buddhist meditation to work on various problems associated with the mind and mental stress, mind like mental stress and deficiency of attention, etc., which are called, which are named, known as the mindfulness-based clinical research, uh, MBCR, and mindfulness-based stress re reduction, MBSR, etc. These are experimented on both the children and adults and have uh, proven to be immensely effect effective and life-changing. According to Buddhist philosophy, of afflictive mental states arise due to wrongly perceiving the objects in a distorted manner. Common beings do not perceive things as they are. Therefore, there is a big gap between the reality and appearance of object. In Buddhist philosoph philosophical view, every phenomena is dependently arisen and is empty of essence. They do not have a substantial status of being inherently existent. However, they appear to common beings as independently arisen and truly existent. Because things appear as truly existence, there, which is a fabrication, inappropriate attitude develops and thereafter hatred and aversion and to develop, are developed towards the object which, are, which appear to be attract, unattractive and desire and attachment are developed towards attractive objects. Thus, on the basis of these mental states, all rest of the afflictive mental states like anger, egoism, jealousy, etc. arise. Following the negative mental states, actions are performed with the in, which invariably brings uh, uh, suffering. Thus, according to Buddhism, suffering and happiness in individual life or in, in a society are driven by the action of the people and their good and bad actions uh, are driven by their positive and negative mental states. Hence, mental state is the ultimate origin of our action which decides the constructive and destructive elements in life and society. Therefore, we must pay attention to the significant role of mind in our life. Modern education system must, must include the material related to mind and values and moral education. There is a need of fundamental change in our education system. Education system in the sense that we need to con you know, ch bring fundamental change in the content of the education, and then we need to ch bring change in, as the discussion was going on, the quality of the teacher. Because at, in the modern so society, the quality of the teachers are the publications and the articles that they, they, they have uh, produced in the refereed journals and things like that. But the, the, the nature of the person, how much compassionate the person is, these are not taken into account when the teachers are selected. And so therefore, we need uh, teachers who can transform the younger generation, their students, they who have uh, that kind of capability who can bring this kind of transformation in, 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 within this student. And therefore, these two elements, the analytic mind, the wisdom, and at the same time, a good heart uh, you know, teacher is necessary, which can transform these two things, the, which can transform wisdom to the student and uh, which can, which can transform, transform um, the, the tr transfer the good heart to, to the student and then transform the student in a very holistic manner. So this kind of you know, change is re required. Once we have this kind of teacher, then we can definitely establish a very good relation between uh, you know, student and teachers. With this, uh, I stop here as there is a lack of time. I did not uh, you know, um, expound to many of my points. So I would like to stop here and if there are some questions, I will answer.